Hello, my dears. Hey, it was so nice to have a family reunion and see you all. Well, Grandma's back home now. And we have one more story that goes along with our Come Follow Me studying. It's called Paul's, <clears throat> excuse me, Paul's Journey to Rome. The Apostle Paul had been chosen by the Lord to fulfill a special mission to teach the gospel to the children of Israel, to the Gentiles, and to kings. As a missionary, Paul was very successful. He traveled great distances to many countries. He taught the gospel wherever he went. And after hearing him, many people joined the church. New happiness came into their lives when they received a testimony of Jesus Christ and his teachings. But there were many Jews who hated Paul. They despised the things he taught. They did not want to hear anything about Jesus and tried to stop Paul from preaching. But Paul refused to stop. So the Jews decided he must be put to death. The people falsely accused him of breaking some certain laws. They hoped that the judge would believe them and their lies and condemned Paul to death. He was put into prison to await his trial. But when he was brought before the judge, the people could not prove that Paul had done anything wrong. But the judge would not release him. Several years passed. Paul remained in prison. He became very impatient. He knew he was supposed to teach the people in Rome and that he would never receive a fair trial in Jerusalem. So he asked that he be sent to Rome to appeal his case to Caesar because he was a Roman citizen, so he could do that. And his request was granted. When all the arrangements were made, Paul, along with many other prisoners, was taken aboard a ship to sail to Rome. A centurion named Julius, who was a good and honest man, was put in charge of the prisoners. He could tell that Paul was a great man. For many days, the ship moved slowly because of heavy, strong winds. The stormy winter season was approaching and sailing was very dangerous. Back in those days, they just had sailing ships, not steamships like we have today. At the island of Crete, the ship stopped at a harbor. The ship's owner wanted to find a safe place to spend the winter, but he found that this harbor was not that great of a place to stay. Paul warned the sailors not to leave the safety of the harbor. He said, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with injury and much damage, not only to the ship, but also to our lives. He urged them to stay where they were for the winter. But the master and the owner of the ship and most of the sailors wanted to sail farther to another port for the winter a nicer port. So Paul's warning was ignored, and once th more they set sail in soft south winds. They thought they were doing fine, but soon a tremendous storm began to blow. The sailors worked hard to save the ship and its 276 passengers. That's a lot of people. They took down the sails, and tied the ship together with heavy ropes. The storm continued, so they lightened the ship by throwing many things overboard. In spite of all their efforts, the boat began to leak. The sailors knew that at any minute they could be shipwrecked. The wind was fierce, the noise was deafening. For days the storm continued. The sailors and passengers were frightened, hungry, cold and wet. Everyone on the ship seemed to lose hope. Everyone except Paul. 
While the others feared, Paul prayed. He was calm and unafraid, receiving comfort and assurance from God because he knew that he had to get to Rome. In the midst of the noise, darkness, and despair, Paul arose and said, Sirs, you should have listened to me and not left the safety of the harbor of Crete to suffer this harm and loss. But be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you. We shall, however, lose the ship. Paul told them that an angel of God had come to him that night and had promised, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. God will protect all that sail with thee. Then Paul encouraged them, saying, Be of good cheer, for I believe God. However, we shall be cast upon an island. For fourteen miserable days, the storm continued. Then, one night, the sailors measured the depth of the water and knew that land was not far away. Fearful that the ship would hit the rocky shore and be dashed to pieces, the sailors anchored the ship for the night and waited for morning to come. That night, while the storm tossed the ship to and fro, the sailors decided that they must save themselves. While pretending to throw more anchors overboard, they lowered a little boat over the side. They planned to go ashore, leaving the passengers on the ship to die. When Paul discovered what the sailors were doing, he said to the centurion and the soldiers, except these sailors stay in the ship, ye cannot be saved. So the soldiers cut the ropes attached to the little boat and let it sink into the stormy sea. When it was almost daylight, Paul took some bread and after giving thanks to Heavenly Father, he gave them some to eat. Everyone on the ship was encouraged by Paul's faith. They ate and then lightened the ship further by throwing overboard most of the ship's cargo. When daylight came, they could see land. How relieved and happy they were. They did not know where they were, but they could see a beach and also a river flowing into the sea. The sailors decided the beach would be a safe place to land. So the anchors were lifted and the sail raised. The wind carried them with such force that the ship went right up onto dry ground. The front part of the ship stuck into the sand and the back part of the ship broke into pieces as the waves beat and hit upon it. The soldiers began to worry. They were afraid the prisoners would try to swim ashore and escape. They knew that according to Roman law, if a soldier let a prisoner escape, the soldier would be put in prison. Wanting to protect themselves, the soldiers asked Julius the centurion to kill all the prisoners while they were still on board the ship. Julius was aware of Paul's great leadership ability and knew it was because of Paul that they had all landed safely. He respected Paul and did not want to see Paul killed. So he refused to let any of the prisoners be killed. Some of the prisoners did swim ashore, but rather than escape, they helped the others get to safety. The ship was destroyed, but not one life was lost. The Lord had protected Paul and provided a way for him to deliver the message of Jesus Christ to the people in Rome. And as we continue to study in the New Testament this year, we will read more about Paul's letters and messages and his teachings to help the people understand the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, hey, Grandma was just so happy to see you all. I hope you are all doing well and back home and safe. Remember, 
Grandma loves you. I'll tell you some more later. Bye.